thank you for the opportunity to be involved in this important initiative of the Royal Society of Victoria. And I'll start just by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet, pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and thank Uncle Dave and Damien and other Indigenous people for joining us today and making us welcome. It's a pleasure to address such an eminent scientific audience. I'd like each of you to take a moment and to imagine you're standing in my place and that your audience is a group of eminent bankers. <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> At present, it's hard to find direct action by non-agricultural businesses to protect biodiversity. Yet we're all impacted by the degradation of the natural environment. Business increasingly accept the science of climate change and it's responding with direct action to reduce emissions and assist with the transition to clean, clean energy. However, the business focus on biodiversity is limited. Today's forum recognises that a corporate sector solution is needed to assist with halting the decline in biodiversity. Using academic research, the knowledge of the traditional owners of our land and working with government, Business needs to increase its contribution and devote more resources to this task. Today I'm going to look briefly at the Bank Australia Conservation Reserve and then consider potential projects that might encourage more participation from business. Bank Australia regularly surveys our customers and asks what environmental and social issues they feel most strongly about so that we can act on those issues. And for some time, the results have been incredibly consistent. Number one is climate change. Number three, biodiversity and protecting threatened species, ranking third. Affordable housing comes second. It's environmental and social as far as the bank goes. So our conservation reserve is a response to those customer priorities. Our activities on the reserve include managing fire and invasive weed risks, and working with traditional custodians, the Berenji Gadjan Land Council, to embed First Nations management and culture into the activities on the reserve. We also partner with Trust for Nature and Greening Australia, who work with us to revegetate areas with natural native vegetation, while responding to what science tells us might happen with climate change. Our activities also aim to support and increase the population of threatened species of plants and animals. Each year we report on our progress against targets in our long-term plan. The activities of any business have unintended consequences for our natural environment. However, that's not generally recognised by the business. For our bank, examples of the impact are funding the construction of homes on vacant land. Uh, or emissions from the homes that our mortgages fund. Our ownership of the Conservation Reserve acknowledges this impact and our responsibility to play a role in developing solutions. However, standards and knowledge about the broader environmental consequences of the financial services sector are still maturing. There's little understanding of or attention paid to the impacts of biodiversity. Measurement and disclosure are a precursor to understanding the implications of our actions on the natural environment. A commonly agreed framework for measurement of the impact of biodiversity loss is needed to encourage business, philanthropy and private investment to become more involved in solutions. The absence of an agreed set of metrics and slow, low-cost tools for data collections are a challenge for everyone at the moment. A second issue, and this is something Fran um, co commented on too, is that people and organisations can feel they don't have the ability to have an impact. While aware that there's a problem with the long-term sustainability of our environment, they may be unwilling to invest resources without advice from a trusted source or to identify a worthwhile project. Now, you all interact with businesses every day as you go about your life. And businesses can have an impact. Without going into solution mode, I'm going to throw some ideas at you and ask, why don't you encourage, encourage those businesses that you interact with to do some of these? Firstly, our reserve, it's a working model. It's been working since 2008. 
Other corporates, larger corporates, could replicate and adapt it to fit their own circumstances. This is a long-term project. Once you own land, you're committed to it for life. There are three other short-term actions that organisations can take. Businesses that are now considering action on climate change could explore opportunities to connect addressing climate change with biodiversity conservation. Another opportunity is to partner with organisations who pro provide scientific and technical input into the development of measurement and data collection activities. And a third very simple option is to select a project that, that is promoting restoration and conservation of biodiversity. As an example, over the past two years, Bank Australia has been a major partner of the Half Cut campaign, which helps to save threatened land in the Daintree. We provided information on this campaign to our customers, and our customers and staff have donated almost half a million to date. Approximately one out of every 15 of our customers has donated to that project. There are specific areas of research which would really help business. First, an exploration of why would a business invest in a biodiversity project? How can a business case be presented for this? There are three components to the business case. Tangible economic outcomes, tangible biodiversity outcomes, and intangible outcomes. The tangible economic outcomes arise from a re reduction in negative impacts from floods, bushfires, soil degradation, to name just a few, and possibly from carbon and biodiversity markets. The tangible biodiversity outcomes, such as, uh, uh, such as recovery and protection of species, add to the value created. And the final value, which is intangible, is something we experience at Bank Australia. And that's the value of taking a corporate leadership position that attracts customers and employees to your business. The business case would start with the significant and growing body of research that seeks to demonstrate the contribution of biodiversity and ecosystem services to society. The research would aim to use existing data to demonstrate why corporates should value and invest in nature. A business case for one or two projects would lay the foundation for business leaders to understand what measures they can take to invest in nature in a ways that counter the impact of their business. The second proposal touches on something Fern and I have both talked about, which is the lack of knowledge. And I think there are many community groups and small, small to medium-sized businesses that would be involved in conservation if they understood how to remove some of those barriers to entry. People often recognise a problem in their area, but they don't know how to address it. They don't know how to contact the government bodies, the scientific bodies, the academics, that can give them assistance. So developing some sort of standard templates and even better communicating those throughout the community could make a huge difference here. And the last thing I'm going to do is, is go back to being a banker. I am a banker. Our customers at the Bank Australia want action on biodiversity. And I actually believe that a large portion of the Australian population feel the same way. So our customers are involved in biodiversity action through our conservation reserve. How do they do this? Well, the first step's easy. They join the bank. We have visible targets so they can see exactly what we're doing over regeneration, protection, conservation and working with communities. We report regularly on the progress to them. We use social media as well as annual reports. And our project is managed scientifically with our partners. So it's an easy contribution, visible targets, regular reporting, and manage scientifically. Those are features that make contributing to a good cause very easy. So here's an idea. It's a funding proposal. I'd like to see these criteria spread much around a much wider group. So mechanisms are available to provide bank customers with the option of contributing small amounts regularly to specific funds. The average Australian makes over 600 electronic banking transactions a year and small contributions could be linked to specific types of such transactions. Would our Victorians be willing to make an automatic contribution to a biodiversity fund each time they make a direct debit from their accounts? Would the option for such an easy economic transaction, applied to improving the planet on which we live, appeal to a large number of people? 
Would the biggest contributors to carbon emissions, which recent research tells us are the high socio-economic status people, respond to an option of giving small amounts regularly to a fund where allocation monies were managed by an organisation such as the Royal Society of Victoria? They're questions I've been pondering since being involved with this project, and the view, views of this forum on these questions will be most informative. In closing, I'd like to highlight the two actions that potentially might have significant impact. The first of these, develop a business case for some two, one or two biodiversity projects. And the second, provide an easy, reputable way for Victorians to believe that they too are contributing to funding biodiversity projects. And thank you for your time. I look forward to our discussion.